And good morning, how are we doing today, church? Thanks so much for being with us. Let's stand to our feet. We're excited to worship and see God with you today. For the Spirit of the Lord is in His freedom. Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. Break into the where the Lord is. That's what I'm talking about. So good to worship together today. Online family here in person, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming together and praising the name 
of Jesus. If you're just getting started here at Community, we would love to hear from you. If you're here in person, there's a Connect card in the seat back right in front of you. Anytime during the service, you can fill that out. Just check first time, guests or guests, and drop that in any of the giving boxes in any of our lobbies. And we'll get in touch with you with a free gift. If you're watching online, you can text the word NEW to this number. Free gift is a subscription free to Right Now Media, our favorite resource to equip you to help take purposeful steps forward. It's the largest Christian video streaming resource our planet has. Our gift to you to help you step towards Jesus. And we get to continue to do that right now as we lift these praises to Him.
Would you bow your heads with me right now? Let's pray together. I'm just gonna give you just a moment just to pray where you are. God, we come in here today, undoubtedly, with so many different circumstances and so many different backgrounds and so many different things that we're facing head on today. Yet we can come in here and join our voices in a unifying manner with all of creation singing, you are holy, God, you are worthy. And may we just be reminded right now in this moment that whatever it is we walk in here with, you are bigger than and more powerful than today. And so God, we, we give you our praise not to drown out anything else going on. You are worthy, you are holy to be praised. You are good. And so God, we just continue in that right now. And your word tells us that if we draw near to you, that, that you'll draw near to us. And that is what we're doing in this place. When we come in the, those doors, we come, we draw near to you, God, and ask that your spirit would just move in power in us, change us, transform us, convict us, Pray that we would be more like you when we leave here today than when we came in. And Jesus, it is you alone responsible for our salvation, responsible for hope and life that we've been given through your blood on a cross. And as we take a piece of bread and a cup of juice, we thank you and remember that sacrifice, paying the penalty for our sins once and for all holy and you are worthy to be praised. And so we just continue in that right now as we take communion. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. You can have a seat. I want to invite you to, in just a second, join with me as we pray for the tithes and the offerings that will be given today. These gifts are given. Just want to remind you before we pray that in every single one of our lobbies, we have giving boxes. So not only can you put those connect cards, but if you came today prepared to give, uh, you can do so. Just uh, put your tithes and your offerings in any of those giving boxes located in the lobbies. You can go to communitycc.com slash give and learn a lot more about how to give, a lot of different ways there, how to automate your giving. You can give through the app and text to give. But I want us to all join together and lift this time of giving up to God in prayer. Let's pray together. God, we love you. We thank you for your gift to us. We just spent some time remembering, sharing in the Lord's Supper, communion, 
the gift of your son Jesus and the redemption, the forgiveness, the grace, the hope that we have because of your gift. But thank you also for the invitation to give, to be generous. And so we pray for every single dollar that's given, God, that it will be used to help people hear the good news of your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask this in his precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. It's summertime. We have the best week of the entire year coming up for your elementary school children. If you have a kid, age three through fifth grade, kids camp, it's coming up. It starts a week from tomorrow. You got two weeks to choose from. So if you have a kid, age three through fifth grade, you have to get them there. You have to get them registered. Stop everything else. Get them to kids camp. Like they will have the best week of the year. It's nine to noon every single day. We got two weeks to pick from, identical weeks. So $20, get some a t-shirt, get some registered. But maybe you're like, Tim, I don't have any kids. You know somebody that does? Got some invites. Right outside at the glass wall, there's a whole stack of these. Take some today. Give them to your kids. Have them invite their friends. Have them invite their classmates. Have them invite random people that have kids. Like, you know, your neighborhood, anybody. Keep them in your, your purse, your car, your truck, whatever. Just give these out. See what God can do with your invitation. We hear people all the time saying they started coming to community because their kids came to kids camp. It's going to be amazing. If you've already registered, you do so. Uh, you, there's a parent pickup party this Friday night here at the church. You can swing by, get your, your kids, uh, kids camp packet anytime, 4 to 8 p.m. Big long party, swing by, get your stuff, and make sure they get to kids camp. Guys, next Saturday, let's serve somebody. Community Impact's coming up at the column as you leave. All kinds of information on different ways we can serve people, different things we've lined up. But I want you to listen to my friend Yezi and watch this video with me. In our world today, there are countless things that may tug on your heart. Homelessness, hunger, at-risk children, lonely seniors, really the list goes on and on. But with your help, we can provide for many of those needs here in Broward County, all in one morning of serving at an event that we call Community Impact. Registration is now open for our summer Community Impact taking place on Saturday, June 11th. There will be both on and off campus serves and even kid-friendly serves. So go to communitycc.com forward slash outreach for a listing of all the serving opportunities that day. Or you can pick up a Community Impact booklet in the lobby on Sunday. Well, hey, community, how are you guys doing today? Good to hear. Want to welcome everyone who's in person. Want to welcome those of you who are watching online today. And community, let's give a big shout out to our Pompano Beach campus. Let's, let's hear it for them. Yeah. We love you guys. And, and today is going to be a special day, especially for our Pompano Beach campus. It was in December of 2020 when First Christian Church finalized, we've been actually talking for a year almost, uh, about the possibility of them giving their property to community for the purpose of Pompano Beach becoming a multi-site of community Christian. So that was a while ago, it was a year and a half ago, and we've done a lot of renovations and we're, we're still finalizing renovations before what we call like the big launch. Services are happening there every single week, but we're renovating everything. And today is a big day because today, Pompano Beach and also Tamarack, we are introducing to you our new campus pastor for Pompano Beach. I gotta tell you, last service was so awesome and so exciting about that as we did that. I met our campus pastor uh, via Zoom meeting. This is pre-COVID now, and when you're spread out, there are leaders from all over the state of Florida, part of a board called the Florida Church Partners, and we were interviewing a candidate for a certain position. And as I'm listening to him speak and listening to his wife, I'm going, oh my word, I would love for them to be a part of community, but I knew it'd also be pretty selfish to try to hire them out from the hiring process for this organization that I was a part of. So I didn't do that, I didn't do that, but I just thought, 
And that was three and a half years ago. And we've stayed in touch. And uh, we saw each other back in the fall. And then again, it was in February that, that he reached out to me and said, hey, we're at a transition point. Could you just be praying for us? And uh, so a week or so later, I reached out to him and I said, well, I'm praying for you. And I'm praying that God would bring you to South Florida. And we've had these conversations. We've had interviews and references and all of the different things. We've spent four months from February, early February to right now in this process. You guys are gonna absolutely love our campus pastor for Pompano Beach. He's such a great guy. You'll love his family. So community, let's give it up for our new Pompano Beach campus pastor, Gonzalo Venegas. Gonzalo, come on out here. <laughs> Such a great guy. His name is, again, Gonzalo Venegas, but he has a few names. So, Gonzalo, <laughs> as we get started today, what, what do people call you? What are some of the different names that you have along the way? Yeah, some of the people call me uh, Gonzo. I've had that nickname since I was a kid, That's a, a child. great, great name. Yeah. I love it. And, so, <laughs> and I've had Gonzo and then also Pastor G. Pastor G. And uh, Pastor G. Diddy? Is that... Uh, an, <laughs> Maybe we no. add that here at Community, but then no. again, maybe not. So I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. So, um, well, you have a unique story, and, yes. but before we get into your story and why we're doing this kind of a format today, why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family? Before you do, uh, I got to tell you, when, when we're doing these interviews, I've been uh, on Zoom calls multiple times, not only with Gonzalo, but with his wife, Amanda, yeah. and I would come away and go, wow. Gonzalo is amazing, and Amanda is amazing. And so go ahead and introduce your family for yeah, us. Yeah, my better half, Amanda. So I have a beautiful wife. Her name is Amanda. And uh, together we have three wonderful daughters of 15, 14, and 2 years old. Our 15 and 14-year-old, they love art and they love crafts. Uh, my 14-year-old, her name is Gabby. She has LDS, Louis Dietz Syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder, and She's, to, to date, she's had over 30 surgeries, but she's taught us so much uh, to cherish every single day. Yeah. And so. You have, um, you also have a, a little daughter? Yeah, a little uh, feisty two-year-old, Tamara, um, who, who is amazing. And uh, yeah, so it's. And your oldest daughter's name is? Catalina. Catalina goes yeah. by Cat, right? Yeah. Yep. Now, something uh, pretty awesome. You've been with us yeah. since the middle of May, and so it's only been about three weeks. But within those yes. three weeks, a big moment already happened for your family. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, my 14-year-old, Gabby, she was baptized at Beach Baptism. So yeah, it was man. awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, a pretty, pretty exciting, pretty happy day for all of us. Uh, Tim and I were honored to be able to be out there in the water with yeah. you guys, be, be a part of that. So it was, it was a pretty awesome. So It was a blessing. Gonzalo, a lot of your story, um, we're all shaped by our, our, our family of origin and our parents, the, the family, the home that we grew up in. And um, why, don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about the family that you, you grew up in and how it shaped you? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. And I come from a, a tight-knit family, a big family, and, uh, but also my father was um, alcoholic, and uh, it was, uh, you know, just, uh, I, I grew up in an abusive home, and, and so, and also in the area was a very difficult area where gangs were very prominent there, and so we, we saw all those things. My, I have two older brothers and one younger sister, and I, one of my brothers joined a gang along with my cousins. And one day, something really tragic happened where they were involved in, in a crime. Um, because of that, our family was in danger. And we had to move from place to place to place. And um, at the age of 11, there was an attempt on my life to, you know, hurt our family. But thank God the authority stepped in and prevented that from happening. Uh, that was the good, some good news, but it wasn't all good news. What, what happened that was the really that, that made you guys make a, even a bigger move out of the Chicago area? So yeah, so when, when uh, there was an attempt on my family, we moved to, to West Michigan. And, and so when we moved to West Michigan, 
we, everything externally changed. We were hoping for a new beginning, a new start, uh, but the problem was that, was that everything inside uh, still hadn't changed, and we were still struggling with the same struggles, with the same battles, and, and so I was an altar boy for many years, mm -hmm. and... Um, Before you jump to that, um, mm -hmm. your cousin, because there was that attempt, yes. yeah, and, and that, was, that was a pretty defining moment, so sorry to kind of interrupt no, that good. way, but, but I know that's an important part of your story. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm a little unclear. Did that happen when you guys still lived in Chicago? Yeah. Is part of the reason that you moved to Western Michigan? Yes. So, okay. No, great, great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I had a cousin who tried to defend my family, protect our family, and he, he and his best friend lost their lives um, trying to protect and defend us. And that was after that's why we, and the uh, failed attempt, we moved to Michigan. Michigan. And so um, during that time, um, say when you're from 12, 13, well, what was going on in your, in your family's life and in your life at that point? You're talking about you're an altar boy and uh, almost rather than Pastor G, you almost became Father G. So, uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, God had different plans for you. Yes, but, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but what was going on when you were you know, an early adolescent? Yeah, I, I had um, extreme PTSD, just trauma from you know, childhood and, and uh, so I served for, for many years as an altar boy, and they would send me to different monasteries and different things like that. And, um, but as I shared earlier, like, the battles were still there. They were still raging, and, and so I was still afraid for my family, and I, th I, did, I made the, the, the best dis decision that I thought would help and was to join a gang. How old were you when, when you made 15, that decision? Fifteen. Fifteen. I was fifteen. And why, why did you join a gang at 15? You, you said at the time you thought it was your best decision, but what, what drove you to make that decision? Uh, the, fir the first reason was for protection, and uh, number two was just also just a sense of belonging. It was, um, it was a place where I felt like I could be safe, and, um, which I, now I know it's not true. <laughs> and so, but in that moment, it was for protection and also a sense of belonging and identity. Okay. So you're in a gang at, at 15, and um, and that goes on. And not to you know to dig deep into you know what happened when you were in a gang, but I know that at at some point along the way you're not in a gang, but you're you're leading yeah. the gang. How, how old were you when when that was taking place? When you started leading the gang? Um, around 18. Around? I was 18 years old. Okay, so you're leading a gang, and I remember you said it. You had like different locations, different cities that you're, the, the gangs that you were leading. Were, yes. Okay. And um, that was a, a big change in your life, but there's another big change that was a positive one yes. that happened, and I don't want you to set up, and, and I'm all for you guys out there, so the answer is Amanda. Um, yeah. So what, <laughs> so what <laughs> happened, you. what happened when you turned 18 that was a big positive change in your life? Oh, my wife. I met my wife. And, and good answer. Good yeah, answer. great answer. Thank you. <laughs> she would agree. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I met my wife who was not involved in that lifestyle whatsoever. And so she was my safe place. And so whenever I was with her, I was with her. When I was with my family, I was with my family. So I had separated um, those lifestyles. And, and so she was unaware of all these things. That were going on. That were going so, on. So you're dating Amanda, and um, life came crashing down when you were 20 years old. What, what happened at that point, uh, Gonzalo? Yeah, so because of our decision-making, our bad decisions, and the lifestyle that we were living, we were federally indicted, for, uh, and um, I was sent to a federal penitentiary. Okay. And they sent me all the way to Memphis, Tennessee, uh, which is, uh, there's a federal prison there um, because they, they had a rule where they send gang leaders uh, no less than 600 miles from the nearest border of your state. So you're separated, yeah. you know, by distance and by every means of communication from, from your family. And uh, tell, us, tell us about prison life for you as you're now indicted and you're spending time. How, how, how long did you spend in federal prison? They gave me 37 months, and that wasn't counting the, the years of fighting the case. Okay. Um, so. 
So you're in there for 37 months yeah. in, in uh, Memphis. What was, what was going on inside of you when you were in, when you went to prison and how did things start to change for you? You know, like um, when I went to prison, I wasn't afraid of prison. When I went to prison, I, it's like going to the university if you're in a gang, like right? because there's you think you're big where you come from, but when you go there, you realize that there's bigger people than you, and there's a structure, there's an organization to all of it. And going in there, I I didn't get any better. I got worse. But as I got worse, I realized I realized how how broken I was and. And I was tired of life. And so towards the end of my sentence, it's when, when I really struggled with life and my past decisions. And um, that's where I struggled with suicidal thoughts. There actually came a day, um, as you've shared you know, a number of times in your story and telling that, that you came to a, a point where you were, you were ready to end it, but that was a day that God had a different plan uh, for you. Tell us, tell us about that day. Yeah, that day I had decided to, to take my life, and I, because I, I had, it's not like you decided, it's just you hit such a low point in your life, and uh, I remember just being at that point where this is something I'm going to do that day, and I remember while I was in the prison shower, and I had a moment to just Talk to God, and I remember just crying out to God, and this was like the realest, most authentic prayer I had ever given in my life, and I remember just saying like, I'm sorry. I am so, so tired of this, and you know, in prison, most prisoners, number one petition, what is that? <laughs> Set me free, right? For me it was, Lord, I'll do 10, 20 more years. I don't care. I'm so tired of this life that I just want you. And I remember just praying and, and just begging God, just, I'm sorry, and I love you. And, and I remember just thinking nothing happened that moment, but everything happened because I had surrendered my life to, to Jesus. And I remember just going to my prison cell after just praying and begging for my life. And, and as I sat in my prison cell, it was crazy because in that moment, the feeling I felt, well, the only way I could describe it in that moment was a, melt, a mint was melting around my heart. And no alcohol or drug or pleasure, anything that I ever encountered in my life could come near to that feeling. And that feeling was love. And I remember just, there was no doubt that that was God. And it was so beautiful, so powerful that I remember just thinking to myself, why me, why me? I'm so undeserving and the words that I heard were, my children, my children, take care of my children. And it was amazing because it, I didn't know how or when or what, but I knew that one day I would be a minister. I gave my life to Jesus in that moment in that cell. Amen. And I knew that I would ride or die for the Lord and serving him. Yeah, that's awesome, that is so awesome. Uh, what, what an amazing story. Um, so when you get out of prison, since you're not able to communicate this to Amanda and your family, that this just happened, um, how did that communication take place? What was going on in Amanda and in, in, in your daughter's lives at that point? Yeah, they're, 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 they're missing dad. And they love me, they miss me, and, and they were like hoping that somebody new would come home, you know? And I didn't tell them about Jesus, my encounter with Jesus yet, because everything felt like I was experiencing for the first time. And, but I didn't know that while God was working in me, he was working in them from out in, in the, in the, at home. And, and I remember coming home and they were going to a church plant that hadn't even launched yet, and they were the first family of that launch team. And, and they, they had this pastor that was walking with them, these, these, these people that were loving and, and walking with them. And through them, I learned how to 
what it is to, to be a husband, to, to raise a family, to be a disciple. And it was such a blessing, so amazing. And they, they saw something in you, these church leaders did, because they not only discipled you and mentored you, um, what else did they do for you early on? I mean, this is, you've been out of prison, they see this passion that you have for the Lord. Yeah, they started seeing um, old, ri old gang rivals come to the faith, they started seeing old friends from my old gang coming to the faith, and they, they came together and they supported my education in Bible college and seminary, and so they supported me all through that. Years later, they would welcome me as their lead pastor. Yeah, as you served. Yeah, as, as their lead pastor. That was so awesome. And then through uh, certain, certain events, you got connected to uh, mutual friends, uh, uh, some national leaders that, that you guys are a little bit further down the path than even me that discipled you and, and mentored you. And, um, and community, Gonzalo has such an amazing story. And I can't tell you how many hours we spent because, I mean, this is not um, a typical pastor background story. <laughs> <laughs> I drank a beer once. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was, a, that was a joke. I drank a lot when I was in high school during my <laughs> prodigal season, so that wasn't in the notes. But anyway, yeah. so, anyway. Um, but all of us are uh, trophies of God's grace. Yeah. Every one of us is a trophy of God's grace. Every one yeah. of us has been rescued. <laughs> Every single one of us, and no perfect people here, no perfect pastors, we all have a story, and Yours is a little bit more dramatic in one way. <laughs> but all of our stories are dramatic. When the king of the universe comes to this earth to, to go on this rescue mission for us, that's tr pretty dramatic and that's pretty powerful. Yeah. But, but understanding this and, and considering and evaluating the possibility of having Gonzalo be our campus pastor, I can't tell you how many people, how many hours. And I talked to some of your mentors. Yeah. These, are, these are men that have been walking with Gonzalo for years that have discipled him. There is uh, Alan Algram. Alan Algram is a national leader that I've respected for, for decades. And, and I was talking with Alan this spring and he's discipled in the last five years about 150 pastors very closely, and he said he knows Gonzalo more closely than any of the other 150. He's just taken this, um, this relationship with you and, 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 and is grateful for it. And I've talked with Ken Eidelman, who is the president of Ozark Christian College, where my son graduated from at Ozark, and he went in ministry from there, and Ken, I've had the greatest of respect for yes. for years, and, and Ken had so many great things to say, and, and Greg Marksberry, and so many others, and we would, we would just follow every single, I would say, kind of lead of people that knew Gonzalo, because we knew it was going to be an important, important thing for us to do, and our elders, when he heard his story, when, as you're hearing his story today, just fell in love with God's uh, plan for your life, how God was going before you, how God was working, and, and, and so here's a that's, a, that's kind of a segue, because Gonzalo's story has been pretty visible. I mean, I, I kind of became aware of him. He's on the cover of a, of a magazine, a Christian magazine called Christian Standard, and it says, from gang member to church planner, my life story, and Gonzalo is writing a book about his story right yes. now, and... He's been featured in a lot of different podcasts and different things. So the reason I'm even saying all that is that, because some people may wonder, one of our elders asked, Gonzalo, are, are you safe today? I mean, coming out of a gang and now becoming a pastor, are you safe? So answer that question, which I understand if people would have that. That's a great question. And that's one of the amazing things about, about God, that even when uh, I had came to faith and I was in a prison, God placed somebody in my life who, who was very renowned and known in that lifestyle. And he ended up coming to the faith through our relationship. And he made sure that I was protected and had a pass to go home to be free. And so, like, God has done that repeatedly. He did that in that life. 
And the people from uh, our old situation in Illinois, uh, some of them have passed away, mm -hmm. and others are in prison for long, long periods. And it has also changed over. It's a whole different thing now. So you're feeling safe. I know we've talked yes. about that you know, uh, quite a bit. What, what was it that attracted you to Community Christian Church that made you want to you know, consider joining our, our team here? Yeah, as, uh, as you mentioned before, like, my mentors talked about you, and so I always looked up to you, and, and so th through hearing about you and Community Christian Church and all the amazing things happen happening here, the fruit bearing here, I followed through Facebook, and so I would constantly support a community, and, and so when I emailed you about uh, my family and I praying for, for our next decision and, and um, where, we want, where God would lead us, I wasn't even thinking about coming here. It was just, um, Scott, pray for us, and, and so, but I always looked up to community. I always loved it and loved the diversity and, and all the amazing things being done in the community. And when you sent that email in February, I, uh, I, I didn't reply right away. I think, it was, yeah. I think it was like at least 10 days. At least. Yeah. At least. Because your response wasn't the best. Okay. It was like, come on. Well, why, you know, why are you taking so long to reply? Maybe it was even two weeks. But during that 10, 10 days to two weeks, we were having a lot of prayer, a lot of discussion, a lot of conversations. Because I didn't want to go down a path. And then say, okay, we've decided that we're not going to consider yeah. this. So we were having those conversations with some of the people in your life, some of the, uh, the people that you've collaborated with, yeah. the part, church planning partnerships with, with Alan, with Ken, and with others, and having those conversations. And then we, we started, and, and it, was, it was four months. I mean, we, we uh, I, I was saying, I, I probably spent more time on this process with you than I have in the last three hires combined, and yes. um, as far as staff, because we, we know it's a unique, Yes. situation and we wanted to make sure that we we uh, we made the right one and we feel very confident that we have Gonzalo we're so so excited that you're here you're gonna be the campus pastor at, at Pompano Beach tell us a little bit about the Pompano Beach campus and what you see happening there yeah it's and so yeah as we had just talked a little bit ago God is doing has been doing is doing and will continually to do amazing things here at Tamarack at community and uh, our vision, our goal is to, to expand the amazing things that God is doing here, expand to Pompano Beach to reach the lost, to make disciples and multiply and see people come to faith, to see transformation in a community, in marriages and family. And so that is something that we're really excited. So when we launch, we'll be having two services, uh, two English services and a Spanish service as well. Who, who's doing the Spanish service? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> two, two English services and a Spanish service. Yeah. Who's, who's doing the Spanish service? I will be. So You, <laughs> you speak Spanish? Yeah. I, I, did, I did not know that. <laughs> claro que sí. I did not know that. I, I, I can say two words. Uh, pollo tropical. Pollo tropical. That, so. <laughs> so that's it. That's all I've got. See. But no, I, that was actually one of the things that uh, made Gonzalo a uh, very compelling candidate for us. It, it wasn't his story. It wasn't because of his story or in spite of his story. His story is a part of who he is, and it's who he's, and it's given him a platform that's unique. But he also has a giftedness in being bilingual, and we thought that that would be a great, great thing. We have many Spanish-speaking staff members and volunteers, but unfortunately, none of our ministry staff are bilingual, so we're thrilled that, that he is, and he's going to yes. be leading out. And we are going to have the two English services and the Spanish service, of which he will be giving the message. Let me go ahead and get, give some clarity, because I didn't do this in the last service. Um, one, we want Pompano Beach to feel just like Tamarack. We're gonna really strive to make it yes. feel as, that it, it is community, it feels like community. And every church has a different feel, and we're gonna want Pompano Beach to feel like Tamarack. So part of that is there will be live worship that's gonna happen at Pompano Beach. Yes. The message will always be live streamed. So whoever speaks at Tamarack, the message will be live streamed to the, the Pompano Beach campus. And so oftentimes that's me. As you guys know, we have a big teaching team and Gonzalo is going to be yes. added to that team. And so uh, from uh, Bill and Tim and Mikey and Alex and Gonzalo, whoever's speaking, whoever's speaking here, that 
that will be live streamed to the Pompano Beach campus. And we want it to feel, we want it to feel just like Tamarack. And so, um, so we're excited about that. Um, one of the things that, that I'm excited about is this is an opportunity for many of you to be a difference maker, a change maker, to be a part of the launch team for Pompano Beach. It may be that, that you feel right now that, um, that you come and there's a lot of people here and you're not needed. Let me let you know, the biggest challenge COVID, post COVID, I don't know if we're post COVID, I'm not sure exactly what we are right now, but I, I can tell you what we are. We're at a very challenged time volunteer wise. Uh, many people that haven't returned were volunteers and many people that have returned that were volunteers haven't uh, volunteered to serve. And, and, and so um, there's opportunities to serve here. So I want that to be super clear. But it may be that you wanna be a part of something on, from the ground up, the ground level, that you wanna be this difference maker. And we're hoping, we're hoping that hundreds of you decide that you wanna be a part of the launch team to be a part of Pompano Beach. And so, Gonzalo, tell us about that, how they can find out more information about being a part of the launch team. Yes, definitely. And so, you can, uh, if you're interested, you can text Pompano to the number right there on the screen, and the, there will be a link sent to you, and you can sign up there, because next week, Sunday, June 12th, at 12.30 p.m., so after this uh, service, uh, there will be a meeting, an interest meeting. You don't have to commit or anything like that, but just if you're interested or want to know more information, Come to the meeting. It's at 12.30 p.m. There will be pizza and child care provided. <laughs> so we're anticipating quite a few of you yeah. that aren't even interested in Pompano Beach going to this. <laughs> so don't if you're not somewhat interested or open to God doing that. But if you're even possibly open, we want you to go. As we said, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be pizza and child care, yes. and there'll be an opportunity. We're going to keep it tight. It's just going to be 45 minutes. 45 and, minutes. And Gonzalo's going to share the vision. Because what we need is uh, we're going to need people to be a part of the launch team. We're going to need guest services people. We're going to need yeah. worship team people. Yeah. We're going to need children's ministry people. People. We're going to need student ministry people. We're going to need every position that we have at Tamarack. We're going to need to replicate at Pompano Beach. And this is your opportunity to, to serve and to be a real difference maker. And uh, so we're really very, very excited about that. So there's that. And on your way out today, Gonzalo's going to be at the column. And uh, you're going to be able to get an invite card if you'd like that too. And the invite cards are both in English and also in Spanish. Because yes. we need some Spanish-speaking individuals to be a part of the launch team as well. And so I heard one time uh, a pastor friend say that when he did an interview of a campus pastor and they were gonna hopefully be sending some people to this new location, internally they thought, you know, things are going great here. You know, we, what, if, what if nobody will go? And then after they did the interview with the campus pastor, it was so compelling, they had the fear, what if nobody stays and everybody <laughs> wants to go? We want some of you to go, not all of you. We want some of you to stay. So we hope that we fit the right balance there and we'll sense that. And next week will be your opportunity to find out a little bit more at the Pompano Beach uh, lunch launch. So that'll take place at 12.30 p.m. I hope that you'll be a part of that. Amen. Community, this is a, an exciting day. I, I believe that we're going to look back and, and we're going to say this was a day that started something that was so new, so fresh, and even bold, um, that God is blessing, he's moving, and I know that you guys are the church to embrace this. And, and uh, I, let, let's, just, let's just give our warm welcome, now that you know his story, to Gonzalo's celebration. I, I am so thrilled that... So on your way out today, uh, he's going to be, if you go out the central lobby and there's the column, which is in the middle, to the left, there's the glass wall. There's, he's going to be right there at the edge of the glass. And you can give him a high five, give him a hug, uh, and they're going to be invite cards, but uh, just give him a warm welcome. And uh, before we close this part of our service, I'm just going to ask if you would uh, join with me as we pray for Gonzalo. And as we pray for our Pompano Beach campus. So let's, let's, let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, you are a God of great grace. A grace that is way greater than all of our sin. Father, I, 
I thank you for redemption. I thank you for the way that you love to celebrate and change our stories. We see that over and over and over again in the Bible, and God, we experience it here, and we're, we're witnessing it today, the way you've changed the story of Gonzalo, changed the story of his family. Father, we, we thank you that you've rescued him and that you're now using him and you're redeeming him and his story. Father, I pray your blessing upon him, on Amanda, on their girls. I pray that your face would shine upon them, that you'd pour out your blessing upon them as they lead our Pompano Beach campus. Father, I, I pray for the people who are already at Pompano Beach, for their faithfulness, God, for following you and serving you all these years, for their vision of wanting to reach more and more people who are far from you. Father, I pray for the people who are not yet at Pompano Beach, the people that you're softening their hearts right now, that you're going before them, Father, that you're preparing a moment, a time when their lives, their destinies, their eternities will be changed. Father, we pray for your work there. Father, I, I pray for those who are here at Community that are open, open to being used by you to be these change makers, these difference makers. God, that are sensing right now in this prayer the prompting of your spirit, your calling to leave Tamarack, maybe just for a season, maybe for good, and to go to Pompano Beach to be a part of this team to serve you and to honor you to love you and to love people Father we pray for those that you're calling to go Father I we pray for those that you're calling to stay God with some people leaving there are going to be more needs positions are going to open volunteer positions are going to be open Father I pray for those who are here that are not yet serving that you will call them in a new day to serve you in this place, in this location. Father, we thank you for the kingdom. We thank you for your church. We thank you for the way that you love us. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the hope of our salvation. We thank you for our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, the one who loves us, the one who died for us, the one who rose for us, the one who will return for us. Father, we thank you for him. We thank you for the fact that we can live on mission because of what Jesus did for us and how he, how he calls us to go and make disciples. Father, we, we lift this service up before you today. We pray that it'll be a service that, that honors you as a service that we look back that things changed, changed in the lives of so many because of what's taking place here in South Florida. God, we lift all of this up before you. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you. Go ahead and stand with us if you would. Jesus is called. 
Amen, amen. You guys can have a seat real quick. Just a couple quick reminders before we go. Again, on your way out, all the information. Let's serve somebody next Saturday. Uh, this very next Saturday coming up, Community Impact, all the information you need, all kinds of opportunities to serve right there at the column. You can sign up this week. Let's go serve somebody next Saturday. Then a week from tomorrow, Monday, Kids Camp. All that information, grab some invites, get as many elementary, th third, let's, sorry, I'm blowing that. Age three through fifth grade. Let's get them here, guys. Let's fill this room with elementary school students so that they hear the good news of Jesus Christ, all right? So all that information at the glass wall. Today is our one of our favorite days of community. It's Starting Point Sunday. What is Starting Point, Tim? Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. It is an opportunity for you, if you're new to community, to come hang out. It's about 50 minutes long. It's just a, a quick meeting so you get to hang out with some staff and hear a little bit more about who we are as Community Christian Church. Now, here's the best part, free food. Can I get an amen? All right, everybody, now here's the deal. Everybody, if you've been to a starting point, you can't come again, all right? So this is brand new folks, just start. Come enjoy lunch with us. It's literally right now, after this service, we're gonna be upstairs in the loft. Listen, some chicken. It's catered, by the way, local restaurant. We bring in some catering chicken, some lasagna, we got some pasta, got some garlic rolls, amen for the garlic, any garlic roll people, you know what I'm talking about? So you're like, maybe you signed up and you're like, stop talking, Tim, I wanna go eat, I'm already, I already know. But if you're here and you're like, you haven't been to a starting point yet, that's where you go. There's a big display out in the lobby. Just let us know, come on upstairs, like right now, even if you haven't signed up, go to that table, we'll get you upstairs, we'll get you all registered. And you're like, oh, I can't make starting point lunch, I so wish I could, I want all that food. All right. I'll let you off the hook if you come back tonight for our starting point dessert. All right, right after the 6 p.m. service, about 7.15, you show up, and we'll be down this hallway. We got all kinds of desserts lined up. Now, come on, you can't do lunch and dessert. You gotta pick one. I know how that works. I've worked the system, all right? But we would love to hang out with you, spend some time at starting point today. If you're new to community, that is where you need to be. Maybe you heard Pastor G's story today, and you're like, wow. I feel God calling me to make a choice like that, to make a choice where God redeems me. Maybe you can relate to part of his story where he was lost and he gave his life to Christ. And you're like, you feel God's tug right now. That's 2 Corinthians 5 tug. I want to get out of the old. I need to be made new. If you're watching online, we'd love to help you do that. Text the word pray to this number right now. We'll be in touch with you. We'll help you take purposeful steps towards Jesus, making him your Lord and your Savior. If you're here in person, just a second when we stand up and leave, we'll be right here. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to help you make a decision for Jesus. Don't wait. Do it today. Thank you guys for joining us today. Have a great week, everybody. Take care.